Hello everyone. In this video session, we'll be discussing how do we perform analysis of trusses. As well as, we'll also determine displacement, reaction and stresses using few simple examples. I am Dr. Bharat Vinjamuri from Global Academy of Technology. Basically, a truss is a combination of bar elements that can take loads along the length of the element. It can either take compressive loads or tensile loads. Before we start analyzing the trusses, let us review few basics of truss elements. Usually, a truss element will have 4 degrees of freedom. That is, it will have 2 degrees of freedom at each node. The element shown in this figure will have 2 degrees of freedom Q1 and Q2 at node 1 as well as Q3 and Q4 at node 2. In this case, Q1 represents x-axis and Q2 represents y-axis. Similarly, Q3 represents x-axis and Q4 represents y-axis. Degrees of freedom are nothing but the number of unknowns to be determined in a structure. Therefore, a truss element has got totally four unknowns. These unknowns are also called as displacement vectors. The stiffness matrix of truss element is represented by the following equation. In this equation, E corresponds to the x molus of the material. A is the cross-sectional area. L is the length of the element. Small l and small m are called as directional cosines. These directional cosines we'll discuss while solving the example in detail. The stiffness matrix will follow a specific pattern which helps us to easily remember this matrix. You can clearly observe the pattern in this screen. The reactions of a truss element can be determined by using the equation K multiplied by Q minus F where K is called as the stiffness matrix, Q is the displacement vector which is given by Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4 and F is also called as load vector. The strain of truss element can be determined by multiplying the strain displacement matrix with the displacement vectors. The strain displacement matrix is also given by the following equation 1 by L multiplied by the directional cosine matrix. The stress can be determined by multiplying the strain with elasticity modulus of the material. With this few basics, now let us understand the analysis of truss elements with few simple numerical examples. This example is for the structure with two elements. In this example, we'll try to determine the displacements at the nodes, the reactions, as well as the stress in each element. The cross section area of each element is given in the numerical. Also, the dimensions has been given. A load of 50 kN is applied at, le, at a particular point. Also, the x molus of 200 gigapascals is given for the entire structure. Let us now analyze by using finite element method. Step. While performing the analysis, 
using finite element method is to convert the given geometric model into finite element model. The finite element model consists of nodes and elements. This structure has got two elements and three nodes. There is no specific node numbering scheme in this case. The user can also start node numbering in the reverse direction also. If we change numbering the nodes in different way, this will never affect the end result of the problem. After numbering the nodes, the next step is to determine its coordinate locations in X and Y axis. To find the coordinates of each nodes, an origin is required. In this case, I have considered the origin to be at node number 1. Once again, there is no definite rule to have an origin at a particular location. But for ease, always it is convenient for us to keep the origin at the lower left corner of any structure. Therefore, 1 is selected as the origin. Therefore, the coordinates of 1 will be 0, 0. The coordinates of 2 is 750, 500 in X and Y coordinates. And also, the X and Y coordinates of node number 3 is 0, 500. These coordinates are listed in the following table. This table will help us in determining the directional cosines. Once the node locations or the coordinates are determined, the next step is to determine the length of the elements. The length of element number 2 is directly given in the numerical as 750 mm. In order to find the length of first element, we can make use of Pythagoras theorem. By applying Pythagoras theorem for length 1, we will be able to determine the length of element 1 as 901.38 mm. After finding the lengths and nodal locations, we will now try to find the directional cosines. To find the directional cosines, element connectivity table is most important. The element connectivity table will document the element numbers what will be the starting node of this particular element and what will be the final load of the element. In this example, for element number 1, the starting node is node number 1 and end node is node number 2. For element number 2, the starting node is always node number 2 and the ending node is node number 3. Now let us find the directional cosines. The directional cosines L and M will be given by following equations. The values X final and X start and Y final and Y start represents the nodal locations in X and Y axis. For element number 1, since L, the final node is node number 2, the corresponding X location of the final load is 750 mm and the starting node is node number 1 and the corresponding value of x is 0. Thus, the value of L x final minus x start is 750 minus 0 divided by the length of the element. Similarly, to find the value of m, we will be making use of y coordinates. For element number 1, the final node is node number 2 and the corresponding y value is 500. And the starting node is node number 1 and the corresponding y coordinate is 0. Thus, while finding the value of m, we will be getting 500 minus 0 divided by the length of the element. Therefore, this Directional cosines for L and M for element number 1 is obtained. After finding for element number 1, let us now determine 
the directional cosines for next element that is element number 2 for element number 2 the starting node is node number 2 and final node is node number 3 the x coordinate of the final node is 0 and the x coordinate of the starting node is 750 therefore l is equal to 0 minus 750 divided by the length of the element similarly for element number 2 the final node is 3 and the corresponding y coordinate is 500 and the end node is 2 and the corresponding y coordinate is 500 therefore m is equal to 500 minus 500 divided by 750 which happens to be 0 thus the direction cosines are listed in the element connectivity table once the directional cosines are determined now we will find the stiffness matrix of the element the stiffness matrix can be obtained by using the following equation in this numerical the stiffness matrix for each element will be 4 cross 4 because each element has got 4 degrees of freedom but if we consider the entire structure the entire structure has got 6 degrees of freedom and hence the global stiffness matrix will be 6 cross 6 matrix let us first determine the stiffness matrix of individual element by substituting the values of n smallest area length and direction cosines for each element we will be able to determine the stiffness matrix for element number one and element number two These are the stiffness matrices for element number 1 and element 2. The degrees of freedom for each element are represented at the top of the stiffness matrices. This kind of representation will help us while assembling the stiffness matrices. After finding this elemental stiffness matrices, let us also next find the global stiffness matrix. The global stiffness matrix will have totally 6 degrees of freedom and hence the size of the matrix will be 6 cross 6. This is the element stiffness matrix for the first element and by assembling this we will be able to obtain the stiffness matrix of entire structure. The empty elements will be represented as zeros. By adding these elements, by adding these elements, we will be getting the global stiffness matrix, which will be 6 cross 6 matrix. Once the global stiffness matrix is determined, this matrix will be used to determine the unknowns. The governing equation in finite element method is given by the formula k into q equal to f. In this case, k represents the global stiffness matrix and Q represents the displacement vector and F is the load vector. So arranging all the terms in this form will be getting the governing equation. Let us now apply the boundary conditions. If we carefully observe node number one and node number three are hinged therefore the corresponding values of q1 q2 as well as q5 and q6 at node number 1 and node number 3 are zeros there will be only q3 and q4 thus q3 and q4 are the major unknowns which has to be determined in this numerical also there is a load of 50 kilonewtons 
which is in the direction of Q4. It is in the opposite direction of Q4. So minus 50th kilonewtons has been written in this example. Ensure that the load should correspond to the direction of the displacement. We will be making use of elimination method to determine the unknowns. This elimination method will help us to reduce the entire matrix. In elimination method, the corresponding row and column will be eliminated whose displacements are zeros. Therefore, in this case, row number 1 and column 1 will be eliminated. Similarly, since the second element is also 0, second row and second column will be eliminated. Then fifth row as well as fifth column will be eliminated and sixth row and sixth column will be eliminated. Thus, we will be getting the reduced matrix which is as shown. By solving this matrix, we will be able to determine the values of Q3 and Q4. Q3 value is 0.281 mm and Q4 value is minus 1.032 mm. The reactions for a truss element can be obtained by the equation R is equal to K into Q minus F. The value of displacement vector is represented here and the load nodal values are represented here. The reactions will be in newtons. The user has to practice carefully the matrix multiplication. Let us now determine the strain for individual element. To find the strain, we will be making use of the equation B into Q. B represents the strain displacement matrix and Q represents the displacement vector for each element. For element number 1, the displacement vector will be 1 by L1 multiplied by the direction cosine matrix that is for element number 1 0.832 and 0 0.554 and the displacement vectors will be q1 q2 q3 q4 they are nothing but 0 0 0 0.281 mm and minus 1.032 mm by multiplying these values we will be determining the strain for element number 1 Similarly, for element number 2, the strain displacement matrix is given by 1 by L2 multiplied by minus L minus M, L and M. L and M in this case represents the second element that is minus 1 and 0. Since there is minus L, this will be minus of minus 1. So 1, 0, minus 1 and 0. Now, the displacement vectors of second element will be Q3, Q4, Q5 and Q6 which can be obtained from this displacement vector. By multiplying these values, we will be getting the strain for second element. The stress for each element can be obtained by multiplying the strain with elastic modulus. Thus, the stress for element number 1 will be minus 75.12 megapascals. It shows that element number 1 will be having compressive stress and element number 2, the stress in element number 2 is 75 megapascals which shows that element number 2 will be under tensile. Thus, by using a proper procedure, we will be able to solve the displacements, reactions, strain and stress for truss problems. Once again, care has to be taken 
especially while framing the element connectivity table and also while determining the directional cosines. Once the directional cosines has been determined, this directional cosines will help us to determine the stiffness matrices. This stiffness matrices has to be assembled and by using a governing equation and also by using the elimination approach, we will be able to determine the displacements. These displacements will help us in determining the strain and by using the strain and Young's molars will be determining the stress in each element. With the basics from the previous example, let us now quickly solve the remaining examples. In this example, the Young's molars and area of each element has been given. Also, the dimensions for each element has been clearly given. There is a low at this point which is going in downward direction of 12 kilo newtons. The first step as usual is to convert the geometric model into FE model. This model also has got totally two elements and three nodes. Observe the node numbering in this model. We have started the node number from this node, node number one, node number two, and node number three. This entire structure has got six degrees of freedom, which are represented by Q1, Q2 at node number one, Q3, Q4 at node number two, Q5, Q6 at node number 3. Care has to be taken that always first the displacement in x-axis has to be mentioned and later the displacement in y-axis. So here also Q3 is comes first because it is displacement in x-axis and Q4 comes later. The next step is to determine the coordinates of the nodes. To find the coordinates of the nodes, our origin has to be determined. In this problem, the origin has been taken as the lower left corner. So therefore, this becomes 0, 0. From this, we'll be able to determine the entire coordinates of each node. From this origin, the location of first node will be 0 in x-axis and 300 in y-axis. Therefore, the first node will be 0, 300. The second node position from the origin will be 500 in x-axis and 300 in y-axis. Therefore, the location will be 500, 300. The location of node number 3 will be totally 900 in x-axis and 0 in y-axis. Therefore, the location will be 900 comma 0. Thus, we'll be determining the node locations. After finding the node locations, we'll be determining the length of the elements. The length of first element is clearly given in the numerical as 500 mm. And the length of the second element can be determined by applying Pythagoras theorem. Thus, by applying Pythagoras theorem for length 2, which will be equal to root of 400 square plus 300 square will be getting the length of the second element same as the first element. Once the nodal locations and element lengths are determined, we will be framing element connectivity table to determine the directional cosines. The directional cosines for element number one can be obtained by using x coordinate values. Element number one is in between node number one and node number two. The starting node of element number one is always node number one and the final node is node number two. Thus, the corresponding x location for node number two is 500 and for node number one is zero, which gives the value L is equal to 500 minus zero divided by 500. For M, the corresponding 
y coordinates of node number 2 and node number 1 are considered which happens to be 300 minus 300 which is 0. Similarly, we will be determining the values of L and M for second element. The starting node of second element is node number 2 and end node is node number 3. Thus, by considering the locations of x and y coordinates of starting node and end node, we will be determining the directional cosines of element number 2. The value of L can be obtained by considering the x coordinates of final node and starting node of element number 2, which happens to be 900 and 500. And to find the value of M, we will be taking the y coordinates of final node and starting node of element number 2, which happens to be 0 and 300. Thus, we will be determining the values of directional cosines of second element. After determining the direction cosines, now we will be determining the element stiffness matrix, which is given by this equation. By substituting the given values of x molars, area and length, and also by substituting the direction cosines of individual element, we will be determining the stiffness matrix of each element, element number 1 as well as element number 2. By assembling this stiffness matrices, will be able to determine the global stiffness matrix which will be a 6 cross 6 matrix. Always care has to be taken that the stiffness matrix for each element will be of 4 cross 4 because it has only 4 degrees of freedom. Each element will have 4 degrees of freedom only. But if you consider the entire structure, the entire structure will have 6 degrees of freedom. Thus, by assembling the first stiffness matrix of element number 1 and second matrix of element number 2, we will be getting the global stiffness matrix. The global stiffness matrix can be obtained by assembling stiffness matrix of first element and the stiffness matrix of the second element. The empty rows and columns are substituted with zeros. This is the global stiffness matrix for this structure. To determine the displacement vectors, we will make use of governing equation which consists of the stiffness matrix multiplied by the displacement vectors Now, let us substitute the boundary conditions. In this example, node number 1 and node number 3 are hinged, thus representing there will be no movement in x as well as y direction at node number 1. Therefore, q1 and q2 at node number 1 will be zeros. Similarly, at node number 3, since there is a support, Q5 and Q6 will also be zeros at node number 3. Thus, there will be only Q3 displacement at node number 2 and therefore, there will be also Q4 at node number 2. There is a load of 12 kN which is applied in negative direction of Q4. By using elimination approach, we will be reducing this matrix and thereby we will be trying to find the unknowns Q3 and Q4. Since the first element is 0, but the corresponding row and column will be eliminated. For second one, the second row and second column. Similarly, the fifth row and fifth column, sixth row and sixth column will be eliminated and the reduced matrix is given as follows. By solving this matrix, we will be able to determine the value of Q3 and Q4. The reactions for the structure K 
can be obtained by multiplying the stiffness matrix with the displacement vector and the resultant will be subtracting from the force vectors. Thus, we'll be getting the reactions in newtons. R1 represents the reaction in x direction at node 1. R2 represents the reaction in y direction at node, node 1. Similarly, R3 represents the reaction in x direction at node 2. R4 represents the reaction in y direction at node 2. Similarly, R5 represents the reaction at node 3 in x axis and R6 represents the reaction at node 3 in y axis. The strain can be determined by using the formula for first element the strain is minus 4 into 10 power of minus 4 and for second element the strain is obtained as minus 5 into 10 power of minus 4. Here for first element the direction cosines corresponding to first element has to be considered and also q1, q2, q3, q4 for first element will be taken from the displacement vector. Similarly for second element the direction cosines of second element will be used as well as q3, q4, q5, q6 the displacement vectors will be taken from the displacement vector table. Thus, we will be finding the strain. The stress for first element is minus 80 megapascals, which clearly says that it is in compression. And for element 2 is also in compression with minus 100 megapascals. Let us solve one more example where a truss with two elements has been shown in the figure. Also the dimensions has been given. It has to be noted that an additional roller support is given at this particular location. Also a load of 10 kN is applied. The Young's molars and area has been given in this example. The first basic step is to convert the given geometric model into finite element model. This structure has got two elements, element number one and two, and three nodes. The entire structure has got six degrees of freedom, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and Q5, Q6. Node number one and node number three are supported, thus restricting the displacements q1, q2, q5 as well as q6. Node number 2 has got a roller support thus the node number 2 cannot move in y direction therefore q5 is also restricted. Therefore there is only one unknown that is nothing but q3. The nodal locations for each node are determined by considering node 1 as the origin and is listed in the following table. After finding the nodal locations, let us determine the length of each element. Length of first element is 4 meters. The length of second element is taken here by Pythagoras theorem. In this example, all the values are considered in mm. The element connectivity table will be determined by finding the directional cosines. The directional cosines for element number 1 will be 1 and 0 and for element number 2 will be minus 0 0.8 and 0 0.6 which are listed in this table. Once the element connectivity table has been established, let us start finding the stiffness matrix. The stiffness matrix can be determined by substituting the values of Young's molars and area in the following matrix equation. 
Thus, the stiffness matrix obtained will be as follows. Assembling the stiffness matrices will give the global stiffness matrix. The first stiffness matrix of element 1, the stiffness matrix of element 2 will be assembled. The empty rows and columns will be zero. Thus, we'll be getting the global stiffness matrix for the entire structure. We'll use this stiffness matrix in governing equation to determine the unknown displacements. In this case, as discussed earlier, since there is a support at node number one and node number three, the values of Q1, Q2, Q5, Q6 will be zeros. And since there is a roller support at node number two, the value of Q4 will also be zero. Therefore, there will be only one unknown. We'll be using elimination approach to eliminate the corresponding rows and columns whose displacements are zeros. Thus, we'll be having an equation 4.76 into 10 raised to 4 multiplied by Q3 is equal to minus 10,000. Here, there is a load applied at node number 2 in negative direction of Q3. Therefore, the value of 10 kN is taken as minus 10,000. By solving this equation, we will be able to determine the value of Q3. The reactions can be determined by the following equation. The strain will be determined by multiplying the displacement matrix with the displacement vectors. Therefore, the strain of first element is given by the following equation, whose value will be minus 5.25 into 10 raised to 5 minus 5, and for element 2 will be minus 3.36 into 10 raised to minus 5. The stress can be determined by multiplying the elastic modulus with the corresponding strains. In this case, both the elements are having compressive stresses as indicated by negative sign. With the knowledge gained in the previous example, try to practice solve by yourself and determine the displacement, reaction and stress for the given structure in this example. Thank you for watching this video. In the next session, we'll try to analyze a truss member with three elements. Have a nice day. Thank you.